Stephen, let that sit in a second. What was your reaction to Kobe's Kobe's comments? I, mean, I know what he mean. Uh, Tim Duncan, perfect example. When I got to San Antonio, I wasn't as confident as I was now, as I am now. Um, I didn't. I wasn't guaranteed a, a, a spot on the court. My first year, I was on the injured list. I didn't play at all. And uh, I'm coming on a team where you got two Hall of Famers, David Robinson, Tim Duncan. You got Sean. There. You got a lot of guys on this team that's proven in this league. And the year I do get a chance to play, I have Steve uh, Smith ahead of me, Bruce Bourne, a lot of guys. This is the time me and Ginobili came in together. I had no idea how to play basketball. I had no idea how to play on the championship team. But Tim let me know that, you know, playing defense, working hard, you, you belong in this game, uh, passing me the ball at times when I wasn't supposed to get the ball, telling me that I could shoot the ball and all this type of stuff. Just the confidence he gave me knowing I wasn't the best player, knowing I wasn't the second best player on the team. The confidence he gave me was the reason I was able to stay in the game and make big shots game six in the finals to win the championship or, or to lead the team in scoring game six in the West Conference finals because he gave me that confidence all, all year, even at times when Pop took me out. You know, when I when I was frustrated and I came out the game just out of it, Tim kept me in the game. So I understand exactly what it means. It's, it's not just passing me the ball. You know, it's, it's taking me to play paintball with him when we're not practicing, make me feel like a teammate. It's all those little things that LeBron does. So I don't know if Kobe's saying that LeBron doesn't do that. That was the LeBron, insinuation. I'm not agreeing with Kobe. LeBron is one of the best teammates I've ever seen as a star. Uh, LeBron has done everything. He has done everything right. When I talk about LeBron, I, I talk about a lot of things that he doesn't do as a player. What I would have done if I was in his shoes. But as far as him as a man, as a player, as a leader, as a as a teammate, he has done everything right. And there's nobody that can take anything away from him. It's great advice Kobe's giving. The problem is Kobe needed to give it to himself it's, ten it's, years it's, ago. It's advice my mom used to give me, boy. Don't do as I say. Don't do as I do. Right. Don't make the mistakes I did. Yeah. Kobe is talking about LeBron needing to do stuff that LeBron is one of the best in NBA history at doing. That LeBron gets criticized for doing too much of. For always trusting his teammates. For all, What is the play that maybe changed the NBA Finals? LeBron finding a cutting George Hill for a layup that could have won game one instead of saying, I have to do it all myself the way we know Kobe would have done. And LeBron doesn't get to the finals. He doesn't get to the finals if he don't trust them. Now, because I had told LeBron, I had sent the PSA, give up on your teammates. And he had plenty of chance in the Indy series. Had, and he rallied them in the Toronto series to empower them, and they don't win the Boston series if he don't depend on those other players. If he hadn't been empowering Jeff Green, much to my oh dismay, my all year long, continuing to find Jeff Green, who was open for a reason. He called him my guy. Open for a reason. My guy. Then guess what? When Kevin Love goes down in game six of the Boston series, Jeff Green is not ready to step up and ready to do things. Just like you're saying, if Duncan hadn't empowered you prior to game six of the Western Conference Finals, you're not in a position to lead the team in scoring. You're not in a position like I, – I think your story, your example is a great one because Duncan is – one of the greatest players ever. And teammate. And, 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 he, and he called me the ultimate teammate. Which is. He gave me that title. To this day, I think you're. I think it's the thing you're proudest of in your basketball accomplishments mm -hmm. is that you believe in your heart of hearts you're the best teammate there was. And Tim Duncan bestowed that upon mm -hmm. you, right? Yep. And so, like, the, the, Kobe saying this, there's just some irony to it. Because that's not who Kobe was as a player. Right. He didn't empower his teammates. He undercut his teammates. He, when his teammates didn't perform, he talked bad about them, whether it be in a parking lot or to the media or to Stephen A. Smith. And for LeBron had every opportunity. The media was begging him mm -hmm. to bang on his teammates this postseason. He wouldn't he do, it. do it. So I don't know what Kobe's talking about. Well, obviously, he's referring to Kobe Bryant in some sort of— He's referring to LeBron I'm James. sorry, LeBron James. Apologies. In some sort of removed, you know, from up here kind of place. Do, do, when, you, when you listen to that and you, and you hear that— can you see or can you explain to me what Kobe's talking about? Does Kobe think that just by LeBron passing the ball to these guys, in, in, in LeBron's mind, he's saying, hey, look, I'm doing what I can. I'm being a good teammate. I'm giving them the, I'm giving them a chance. Mm -hmm. Because you talked about these multi-layered approach that Tim Duncan took to you, which is taking you to play paintball and mm -hmm. keeping you in when you're getting frustrated and things like that. We did see LeBron get frustrated, but do you think that he, that Kobe's got a point there with, with how he sees LeBron as a teammate? Well, I think one thing he's doing is he's expecting something from LeBron that as players, we all expect from him. Like, he's better 
in the finals that we, we want him to play harder and do more in the finals than he did. Like, we all know LeBron gave all the effort, he used all the energy he could possibly use. But us knowing how dominant he is, we felt like he should have went out in the finals without passing the ball. I mean, this team hasn't helped you all year. This is the last two games of the season. Go all out. Go out shooting. And that's what players that played the game, that's what we wanted to see. Now, I can't blame a man for playing the game the right way. This is just, like I said yesterday, this is the smartest person I've ever seen play basketball. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't force somebody to just change their game last minute. This guy has best done everything right. So, I can't, it's, it's hard to knock LeBron because he's done everything right, but at certain times, as players like Kobe and sometimes me, I, w I would like to see him do more. But is it possible? Because he's done everything. Yeah, I, I'm only going to listen to some of what Kobe is saying because. It's not I, jealousy. I, let's, let's, let's say that. No, it's, it's not, not jealousy. jealousy but he Kobe got, has five championships. He's all he's top three player, five, four player in the game, too. Yeah, it's, it's not, not jealousy. Tell you something. Everyone it's lives in their own reality. And in his reality, because I talked to Shaq about Kobe. A good friend of mine, Ron Harper. Ron Harper was brought to the Los Angeles Lakers on his first day with the Lakers. Phil Jackson sent him to a room. And Kobe Bryant and Shaq came into that room after him. Ron Harper was there to solve the beef between the two of them so they could coexist. So I know what Richard Jefferson, I know what Ray Allen, Dwayne Wade, I know what they say about LeBron. Man, the best supporting superstar that they've ever been around. They've never been around the person who spent the kind of money on activities, group activities, team activities, food, clothing, like LeBron James. So this is what the NBA players have said. So you can't just listen to Kobe Bryant because I remember hearing Kobe on a radio show talking about Shaq, about the number of lawsuits and everything and the number of fires and money he's thrown so that he wouldn't get himself into some PR disaster. LeBron James never been involved I, I, in anything like and that. And LeBron James never run off a teammate like Shaquille O'Neal. But I, but listen, Kobe's, for some reason, you can say it's not jealousy, it's fine. It's an odd timing for Kobe to all of a sudden he goes on Alex Kennedy's podcast, takes shots at LeBron. He does. There's an article with Howard Beck, he quotes eight people, the only one who takes shots at LeBron in the article is Kobe. And then he sends this tweet. Kobe gets thousands of mentions every day. Someone tweets to him that Kobe Bryant was on the Heat Cavs instead of King James past six years and faced the Spurs and the Warriors. He'd have zero rings. Context is everything. Kobe says, we had to face the Spurs every postseason pretty much, not to mention the first super team in Boston. But, hey, what do I know? It's the well, truth, though. Okay, man. but here's the thing, though, Stephen. It's the Steven, truth. here's the thing, though. It's <laughs> actually not the truth. How is it not the truth? Okay, well, so I'll tell you. You know how many times Kobe beat the Spurs Without Shaquille O'Neal on his team, that's hold not on. what he said. Hold on, let me let me just he tell you. He didn't people. say who he had on his team. Hold he on. said how many times he, said, he played. Them. Okay, so so right, so from 2005 to the end of his career, mm -hmm. he played the Spurs three times. Right, he beat them one time. And let's just let's just give Kobe and everyone, maybe you as well. I was on a, that team. A bit, of, uh huh. Stop the three P. A, a bit of a a bit of a history lesson, if we may. Okay. So, like, if, if Kobe wants to talk about the Celtics, the team, yeah, the Celtics team that beat you and then you guys beat them mm -hmm. in a game seven where you went six of 24 because you weren't trusting your teammates, but Ron Artest saved you. I get it. I get it. That's fine. That same Celtics team that then LeBron ended their run in the 2011 Mavs. You guys remember the 2011 Mavs? LeBron's biggest black mark losing to them in six. Oh, yeah. They swept Kobe in Before four. that. Before that. You remember 2012 OKC, the, the team LeBron beat in five? Oh, they beat Kobe in five. That 2013 Spurs team that the tweet's referring to, that LeBron beat, yeah, they swept Kobe's Lakers. So if Kobe, listen, Kobe didn't have to insert himself into this story. Nobody was talking about Kobe Bryant this week. And that's why he's talking about himself this week. That's why he's talking about his team this week. And that's why people need to remember, like, we can go back through the history when he had a team like LeBron's did this year. And they didn't get out of the first round for three straight years in the middle of your prime. We can do that. I don't know why Kobe wants that smoke this week. But they almost three-peated, too, though. What do you mean? Kobe and Shaq almost three-peated, too. Kobe and Shaq did three-peat. They, okay. they, they could have four-peated, right. but Kobe didn't want to play with him, but all he cares about is championships. All right, you guys, we're going to do a little piggybacking off of uh, what the conversation of Steven Jackson said with, uh, with Nick Wright and also with uh, Chris Carter. Um, the thing about Kobe Bryant is, which I grew up watching Kobe Bryant and love Kobe Bryant's game. Um, the thing about leadership, when you're talking about leadership, there's different ways that people lead. 
And there's different ways that people do things. Everybody is not the same type of leader. Um, and that's what makes us unique as people. We're all not the same. Everybody is not Jordan. Everybody is not Kobe Bryant. Everybody don't have an assassin type of attitude. You know, and um, sometimes, yeah, LeBron can be passive aggressive. When you want him to score, he's passing. And when you want him to um, pass, he's scoring. So, you know, whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, but this ain't to, uh, you know, defend LeBron or anything. It's just to say about um, what Kobe Bryant talked about on the leadership of LeBron James. Now, LeBron does do things a little different from um, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. But at the same time, um, that doesn't make the, that doesn't negate the fact that he's not a leader. Um, Kobe Bryant did a lot of things as far as if, if you want to uh, say that, you know, Kobe Bryant was not always the greatest teammate. He didn't always uplift his guys. You can go back and look at the uh, the video when Kobe Bryant was um, cussing out Nick Young them when Nick Young was playing with Kobe. You can you can see that Kobe was frustrated sometimes with his teammates when they wasn't able to play on the level that he wanted them to play on. And we all, you know what I'm saying, leadership comes from character. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying, Everybody doesn't do things the same way when they're doing things. And the thing about LeBron James is is that he was going against a well oiled machine in the Golden State Warriors. Ain't no way he's going to win it by himself. Um, he had a bunch of guys that can't get their own shot off. and uh, But he kind of, if you want it, the, the Cavs did this to themselves. Uh, and LeBron and them did this to themselves. You know, you had an opportunity to keep uh, – Dwayne Wade and Rose on the team. If if AI, I mean, uh, not AI, I'm sorry, guys. If uh, IT was the problem or the cancer in the locker room and wasn't getting along with uh, Kevin Love or whatever was going on in the locker room, you guys just needed to have a team meeting and get this straightened out instead of trading the whole team away. And then when you get to the finals, um, you don't have any help because none of these guys, even though they're younger and athletic, they were they were afraid of the moment. And uh, they couldn't handle this moment. It was too big for them. The lights were too bright for them. So one thing that I know um, about Kobe Bryant is that he wasn't always the greatest teammate. And I love Kobe Bryant. I love this game. But he wasn't always the greatest teammate when it came to talking with Dwight Howard. Or um, That's the reason why the Lakers suffer now, because Kobe would never allow the team to l let somebody else come in and take the, the keys from him. And now the Lakers are suffering, trying to make the playoffs, and they can't. They're losing year in and year out because they never had anyone to take the keys from Kobe Bryant. And he didn't train up anybody or he didn't mentor anybody to be able to take the, uh, the keys from him. So it's a lot, man, when you're dealing with leadership and, you know, basketball and stuff like that. And the, the end goal of the end of the season is to win the championship. But on LeBron James' leadership, I, I, you know, he does have leadership, but he just displays it in a different way from these guys. He's more of a team guy, more so than just always, you know what I'm saying, um, looking at himself to get himself involved. He's looking at the team to try to get them involved as well.